which DNA test is best for genealogy. Hi, I'm Diane Southerd, founder and CEO of Your DNA Guide, and I have some answers for you. You see, when you take a DNA test, it's more than just getting those test results. Your testing company needs to be able to deliver to you the people, the trees, and the tools that are going to make your journey easier. So let's dive in to these DNA testing companies to see which one might be best for you. So there are five DNA testing companies that can deliver some level of family history information to you. But remember, we are going to evaluate these companies based on the people they give you access to, the trees they let you explore, and the tools that make all of that easier. So let's start with number of people. This is maybe the most important thing for most of you who are starting out, because in order to make real progress in family history, you have to have the right DNA matches. So by far, Ancestry DNA is leading the pack. They have the most people who've tested in their database. 23andMe is about 10 million people fewer than that, but my heritage is less than half of the Ancestry DNA database size. Family Tree DNA has under 5 million people tested, and we don't actually know how much data living DNA has. But it's not just the number of people, it's also where those people might be from. And while we don't have really good data from our companies about this, we can kind of gather from my experience uh, talking with lots of people about their test results that if you're looking for someone from the Middle East or from Scandinavia, oftentimes those people will be found in my heritage. And then Living DNA is our only UK based company. So oftentimes you'll see people who have tested tested there that haven't tested in other places. So if we were going to award our DNA testing companies a badge for the people aspect that we're looking for, I would give a badge to all three of these companies, either for their size or their um, access to people in, in places maybe where uh, we might not otherwise have them. All right, but people is just the beginning. It's really the tools that we need to explore because with the tools come the ease of discovery. We want to find our ancestors. We want to make connections with our DNA matches. And there are some tools that are going to make that easier than others. So let me just I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller here so you have more real estate on the screen. All right, let's start with a chromosome browser. So a chromosome browser is a way for you to physically identify the pieces of DNA that you share with other people. I think it's really fun. It makes it feel like it's an actual physical connection, which it is. So there's a lot of value in a chromosome browser just for those reasons, but mostly you don't need one to do good genetic genealogy. Unless, of course, you happen to have endogamy, which is the process of marrying within the same family or culture or region over and over and over again, then a chromosome browser can become really helpful. But again, for most of you, most of the time, this isn't necessary, but it is kind of a fun, nice to have. Then we have auto clustering. So auto clustering is a way for the testing company to gather a group of matches they think might be related to each other. So auto clustering, again, like any automated tool, can sometimes give you a head start in your research, but unless you are really good at understanding exactly what it means, sometimes these auto tools can kind of lead us astray. Really powerful tools are when they can connect your DNA matches trees to each other so you can see better how you're related to them. These are really, really powerful tools and give you an excellent head start in helping you figure out how you might be related to other people on your match list. But perhaps the most powerful tool in our entire DNA testing arsenal is what we call the shared matches tool. This tool helps you create a network. It helps you create on your own a group of matches that relate to the line you want to research. Next in power to the regular shared matches tool is what I call the shared matches of matches tool, or I abbreviate it SMOMS. So the SMOMS tool goes one step beyond that shared matches tool and helps you see not just how you're related to other people, but how they are related to each other. So let's see how each of these tools shakes out within each of our testing companies. So 
you can see here, and I encourage you to, to pause this screen and you can really study it if you want to, but notice how I've distributed these tools among our DNA testing companies. And you'll see that that SMOMS for both Ancestry and MyHeritage is kind of grayed out, as well as the regular shared matches tool at MyHeritage is kind of grayed out. It's because I want you to understand that in order to access these tools at these companies, you will have to pay some additional fee in addition to the price you paid for the test. So again, those tools require specific access that you would need to pay for. But again, by looking at this chart, you can kind of get a feel for which companies are offering which tools. So the tools are important, the people are important, but honestly, you won't get very far if you don't have access to family trees. You have to know how are these people related to you. And to do that, you have to know who their people are. So there are only two companies giving us tree access at this point. Only Ancestry and MyHeritage are really providing significant records information as well as significant access to family trees. So again, if we look at these um, with that shaded, so even though they do have tree tools, again, to access these tree tools, for the most part, you're going to also need to pay for a subscription, though you may have limited access to some trees without a subscription. So again, if we're looking at this chart and we're asking ourselves, which is the best test for genealogy? I will have to go with either Ancestry or MyHeritage. I think the tree tools are essential. I think the, the access to seeing the shared matches of matches is quickly becoming a very essential part of this process. Plus, these two databases are really focused on genealogy. So they know you, they know your goals, and they want to help you achieve them. But I do want to mention that Family Tree DNA has Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA testing, the only company offering these two tools, which are very useful, but I'm not going to go into them right now in this video. But it is a really important thing to understand. Additionally, I want to point out that 23andMe and Living DNA, again, they access different markets than our genealogy companies do, which means people have tested there that haven't tested anywhere else because they're not genealogists, they're just looking for something else. And so they've come to these companies for that reason, but they are still probably really valuable matches to you. So if we're talking about um, populations, if we're talking about tools, if we're talking about access, this is how I'm laying it all out for you. But the most important point I want to make is that as soon as you test, you've created a record you have determined that your record is, is needed to be shared. It needs to be documented as part of your regular family history process. So you really can't go wrong necessarily in which test you choose. Uh, all of our companies are going to give you a really solid record of yourself and theoretically help link you to other people who can help solve your family history mysteries. So if you found this video valuable, I would encourage you to like it and subscribe to my channel as we put out a lot of informative videos. And if you'd like to know your own next steps, you can click, click on the link underneath this video and I'll take you to a free resource that will help you identify your next best DNA step. So thanks for joining me. I'm Diane Southard, your DNA guide.